and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Forward, the podcast series brought to you by ISS ESG, the responsible investment arm of institutional shareholder services. I'm Mara Souders, your host and communications lead at ISS ESG. Today, I'm joined by two of my colleagues, Nicole Strunk and Barbara Hoff, both of whom work as ESG research analysts in the corporate ratings team of ISS ESG in Munich. Nicole is a specialist for the metals and mining sector and is also responsible for eco-efficiency and climate change related issues. Barbara is the climate change topic specialist for the ESG ratings team. Expanding on ISS ESG's recent thought leadership paper, researched and written by Nicole Strunk, The Climate of Mining, Investor Risks and Opportunities Driven by a Changing Climate, Nicole and Barbara will explore the unique ESG risks faced by the metals and mining industry, as well as the key role the industry plays in the global transition to a circular economy. Welcome, Barbara and Nicole. Thanks for joining me today. Nicole, could you start off by giving us an overview of today's topic? The extraction of mineral commodities such as iron or gold or copper, as well as the processing of these raw materials to produce a variety of metals such as steel and aluminium, provide the basis of our current economic system. However, these processes emit immense greenhouse gas emissions each year. And at the same time, mining operations are extremely vulnerable to the effects of climate change, as they are locally bound to the occurrence of resources and usually located in remote and environmentally sensitive regions. Despite these constraints and concerns, we depend on metals to uphold our 21st century standard of living and productivity. And they are actually indispensable for the transition to a clean energy and low carbon economy. So the key question of the paper we published is, within this field of tension, how can mining companies respond to investor risks driven by a changing climate while seizing associated opportunities? Barbara, can you tell us a bit more why the topic is important to corporations and investors? Yeah, sure. So public attention to climate change has been increasing. The impacts of climate change are becoming more and more obvious all over the globe. And therefore, the topic has finally arrived at the top of the agenda for legislation in many, many countries. And climate change has also gained high prominence on the international financial agenda, Beginning of this year in January, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, states in his annual letter to CEOs that climate change has become a defining factor in companies' long-term prospects. And just a couple of days later at the World Economic Forum annual meeting in Davos, one topic was brought to the center stage, climate change. And we really can see why. Companies with high exposure to greenhouse gas emissions have high transition risks associated, for example, with increasing carbon prices, changing customer behavior, or simply changing reputation depending on a company's response to climate change. In addition, companies with many physical assets are exposed directly to the impacts of climate change and have to adapt accordingly, which is another cost factor. We expect that companies that fail to address these risks or do so too late will have a major disadvantage against companies that act earlier. As Nicole pointed out before, both issues, the high emissions and therefore high transitional risks, as well as the high physical risk exposure pertain to the metals and mining companies. Nicole, can you tell us a bit more about the carbon footprint of the metals and mining industry? Sure. As I mentioned earlier, mining and metal production processes are highly energy and carbon intensive. In 2019, aluminium and steel production alone accounted for about 12% of global CO2 emissions. Our ESG corporate rating currently covers 200 for metals and mining companies. And in our carbon risk rating, which evaluates the risk exposure of an industry and the climate performance of a company, only 2% of metals and mining companies are currently classified as climate outperformers, while 64%, so the vast majority of companies, do not adequately address the risks they face associated with climate change. I see that the overall carbon footprint of mining is huge and that the industry does not yet seem to address climate-related risks in a comprehensive manner. 
But what about their measures and action plans? For example, how well do the companies perform in setting climate targets to reduce their carbon footprint? In our research, we evaluate whether a company has defined a clear quantitative greenhouse gas emission reduction target. And in addition, we check whether a company has set a science-based target. These targets have been approved by the Science-Based Target Initiative and are in line with an international standard for setting ambitious emission reduction targets aligned with the goals set out in the Paris Agreement to limit global warming to well below two degrees. Among the 204 metals and mining companies we cover, only three companies have adopted targets that are officially approved by the Science-Based Target Initiative, which are Hindustan Sink, Sibanya Stillwater and Otto Kumpu. Um, beyond that, we have a further 32 companies that adopted clearly defined reduction targets that may be considered ambitious in the sector context, though they have not been approved by the initiative. But overall, we see clear shortcomings here. So although mitigating climate-related risks has increasingly come into the focus of investors, 73% of rated companies have not set clearly defined greenhouse gas emission reduction targets. Thanks a lot, Nicole. As we said, climate change has become a hot topic within sustainable investment and the metals and mining industry has been in the focus for investors for a long time. Looking at the immense carbon footprint and shortcomings in mitigating climate risks, what are important considerations for investors now? Well, one relevant consideration is the product portfolio of a company because various metals produced by the industry are necessary in the transition to a clean energy and low carbon economy. As the interests in green technologies like solar panels, wind turbines or energy storage batteries is growing, continued investments in these technologies also implies a significant growing demand for certain metals in the global market. The World Bank estimates, for example, that the future demand for lithium will increase by 965% and a 585% increase is estimated for cobalt. Such a skyrocketing demand is difficult to comprehend and I guess even more difficult to meet. I guess even if companies started to act upon the growing market demand, expanding the production of primary metals by more than 100% is very difficult, if not impossible. What about recycling? Are companies considering using secondary raw materials instead of just expanding their mining operations? Good question. And this is in fact another important consideration investors can take into account. As you said, it's almost impossible to meet such exponential future demand especially as the exploration of minerals, the development and the construction of a mine requires a considerable amount of time and resources before the actual production can begin, let alone the social and environmental risks and impacts involved with such drastically increasing extraction of minerals and metals. So to secure the supply, the industry needs to boost recycling. And that does not only apply to lithium and cobalt. Also, more traditional metals like steel and aluminium are essential for producing wind turbines, solar photovoltaic cells and lightweight vehicles. But unfortunately, the share of secondary raw materials in the metals production is still very low, partly because of limited scrap availability on the market. For example, we looked at the steel producers and saw that more than 50% do not seem to use steel scrap at all or only to a limited extent. And at the upper end, around 16% of companies feed more than 70% of scrap steel into their production process. Thanks a lot for these insights. To close out today's episode, what tools offered by ISS ESG can help investors identify whether a company addresses its climate-related risks and opportunities? ISS ESG offers various tools to help investors identify companies with a high exposure to climate risks and how these risks are addressed by the companies. For example, our products include the ISS ESG Carbon Risk Rating and the ISS ESG Corporate Rating. Baba, could you provide our listeners some information on the Carbon Risk Rating? Yeah, sure. The ISS ESG Carbon Risk Rating is a holistic and forward-looking approach to assessing a company's climate performance. It does not only provide a way of measuring the status quo in terms of the current carbon footprint of a company, but also is a sophisticated and forward-looking metric. It evaluates to what extent a company will be able to cope with challenges related to climate change and to realize opportunities arising from a transition to a low-carbon economy. The metals and mining sector is classified as having high carbon risk, 
for reasons that we have explained earlier. On the positive side, the carbon risk rating then assesses climate-related indicators covering material aspects along the entire metal value chain. For example, greenhouse gas emission reduction targets or energy and emission intensities of production. Thank you, Barbara. Adding some information on the second product I mentioned, the ISS ESG corporate rating, assesses the overall sustainability performance of a company, covering around 100 social governance environmental criteria. And the product follows a highly industry-specific approach. So to ensure varying social and environmental risks and impacts of an industry are considered, we have developed both cross-sectoral as well as very sector-specific indicators. Furthermore, we define five key issues for each industry. And the corporate rating of metals and mining companies, these five key issues have an overall rate of 70%. Climate protection, energy efficiency and recycling is, for example, one of the key issues for the metals and mining sector. Thank you, Nicole and Barbara, for providing such valuable insights into the unique challenges faced by the metals and mining industry in the wake of the changing climate, as well as how investors can respond to these risks. For more information on today's topic, access the companion research paper, The Climate of Mining, Investor Risks and Opportunities Driven by a Changing Climate, which is linked in this episode's description. If you have a question on this episode's topic, please feel free to reach out to our experts by email at podcast at iss-esg.com. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to tune in next time to ISS ESG Forward. Forward.